Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to FF episode 2232. Mike's Daily Podcast. 2232. You are listening to this show with Mike Matthews. He does this daily, so it's going to be very good. No, it's not. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be excellent. I don't know. I need some self esteem to keep going with this show. I think it's what I need. Mike's Daily Podcast. Decisiveness. I need some decisiveness, maybe. That'll help getting this show off the ground today. Mike's. We got some stuff Daily prepared for you. Podcast. Fascinating truths in your life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I think we spend too much time on social media. I know that's not exactly groundbreaking thoughts, but still, it is something we do. But then there are places that we work at that require us to be on social media in order to promote things, which makes me wonder what are people doing on Facebook? Why are people still on Facebook? And when people say to me things like, well, Mike, you know, I talked about it on my Facebook post. Well, I don't, this isn't 2008. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't follow you anywhere. That was cool for a hot second, 2009, 2010, maybe a little bit, 2011. We were all on the Facebook and then on the Instagram. But really, it's all Instagram now, pretty much. And TED Talk, if you are young or creepy. And that's about what's going on. That, but podcasting, yes, this brave new world that was created in the last, or the, the decade before this last decade, in the O's. And here we are. And Mike has just done his little Saturday rant with you today here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Here's today's podcast picture. Podcastro Valley 10. The podcast picture is from the lovely Fairmont Ridge. See it now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Yeah, social media. Oh, remember back when it was oh so innocent and fun and people on MySpace. I'm going to make my page look the way I want it to with all kinds of pictures. Yes, Basil hated hated my space. Yes, that's right, Basil. The late great Basil the Boxer. And I have always said I will always refuse to post on any of my social media a picture of Basil the Boxer and me saying Basil's gone. No, I don't feel like a tribute to Basil should be something like this. Somebody saying something on a podcast, but not on a f- dang picture. Ugh. I get so... Somebody actually posted the picture of their dog after they, you know, the last moments of the dog. Uh, they put him to sleep. And they posted it on Facebook I'm thinking, why? Why do I... And, you know, with, with anybody that we lose We want to remember the good times, right? Remember the, the good memories So that's why I don't post that But I will never forget Basil the Boxer And I look at the podcast pictures That I've posted in the past At mikesdailypodcast.com with Basil and remember the good times. Yes. One of the interesting times that Basil and I enjoyed was when we went to Fairmont Ridge often where you see this picture at mikesillypodcast.com and often there were cows. And often there was a dog trying to chase a cow which is completely illegal that somebody else's property. Obviously, the person that owns the cow is not usually there to yell at the dog owner. Hey, get your dog away from my cow. Yet somehow this happens and it's ridiculous and... uh, Yes. I talked to one farmer out there, a, a rancher, a cow owner, who said to me, Yeah, I found the guy whose dog bit my cow and he had to pay for the vet bill for the cow. 
And the dog wanted a burger And the owner had to pay the vet for that Let's talk about something else How about this? This interesting bit of news today A feud between Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump Is likely to heat up after a McConnell-aligned super PAC Announced its support for Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski Who is an outspoken Trump critic As Donald Trump works to strategize How to take down his adversaries adversaries At a GOP event in Florida This weekend he and a number of high profile GOP lawmakers Are meeting for a Republican National Committee Spring Retreat In Palm Springs, Florida The event is meant to discuss unity within the party And to strategize upcoming campaign plans After Trump vowed to punish his opponents In next year's GOP primary races Among those opponents include Murkowski And other Republican senators who voted to to convict Trump During his second impeachment trial back in February Trump has since pledged to fight against lawmakers who have publicly criticized him Highlighting an ongoing divide Within the GOP As the party struggles To break away From the former president's influence Mitch McConnell Who was once considered A longtime ally Of Donald Trump Is among those Who Trump has recently Gone after Last month Trump said McConnell Was hanging by a thread And warned Republicans That his endorsement Determines the difference Between victory And a massive defeat Trump's criticism of McConnell Comes after McConnell said the former president's Actions on January 6th provoked a violent Mob of his supporters to storm the U.S. Capitol though McConnell did not Vote to convict Trump in the impeachment Trial yeah that led A a bunch of people scratching their heads He called the former president practically And morally responsible For the riot that resulted in five Deaths this From The uh, Newsweek Newsweek's website And in response Trump called McConnell A dour, sullen and unsmiling Political hack Now a McConnell aligned Super PAC The Senate Leadership Fund Has publicly endorsed Murkowski In a move that could add further fuel to the fire Last month Trump said that Murkowski Was disloyal and very bad And confirmed that he would be Campaigning against her next year as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast Valley 10. This after she joined six other Senate Republicans in finding Trump guilty of inciting in- an insurrection. She represents her state badly and her country even worse, Trump said. I do not know where other people will be next year, but I know where I will be in Alaska campaign- campaigning against a disloyal and very bad senator. The upcoming Alaska race is thought to be a focal point between McConnell and Trump over the future of the Senate and the Republican Party. Who knew? An Alaskan race. Since leaving office, many believe that Trump has maintained a tight grip over the GOP. He was the highlight speaker at February's Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC. At the event, Ted Cruz... The Texas senator said Trump ain't going anywhere While others praised the former president A gold statue of him was then erected in his honor Trump's control over the Republican Party Also remained obvious at this weekend's convention in Florida Uh, And there we go There you go That's That's what I say There we go There, There we go Let's jump over here though So there are conspiracy theorists That believe that Trump actually won the election And that the Democrats are some really smart Big tech allied aligned Massive hackers They're all a bunch of Matthew Brodericks from War Games That were somehow able to make the election turn in the way of Joe Biden 
and his wonderful son, Hunter Biden, who I have, after everything I've heard lately, he should be renamed Bender Biden. But he's kind of fending off that whole wave of, oh, Hunter Biden, did he was a crack addict, and oh, he had meth mouth, and he messed around with his brother Bo's widow, and then there was the stripper, and wow, on and on and on it goes with Hunter. Yet Hunter has released this book about everything he went through and was like basically, look, this is wh- how bad it can get, and this is how bad I was. A confessional? And Republicans saying, ah, there, there's more he's hiding. He's basically helping out the Chinese. He's in league with the Chinese. Back to China, by the way. So you might have friends that don't call it the coronavirus. They call it the Wuhan virus. February of this year, one in three Americans believed the coronavirus had been created in a lab. This according to Pew Research. One in four thought it had been engineered intentionally and most blamed China. Hate crimes against people of Asian descent have increased thanks to this belief, this in America and in Europe. Now, according to The Street, thestreet.com, what got lost in the translation, the WHO, World Health Organization's team assessment, may not have been extensive enough that includes the, possi- uh, the possibility that the virus was around months before Wuhan in or outside of China. There's too much partial, if inconclusive, evidence of pre-Wuhan events outside of China, including in Italy, France, Germany, the UK, and US, and elsewhere, to be ignored. I have heard over and over again about people who died suddenly in 2019 Late 2019 And people looking back at it now Friends of those who have passed And said you know this It could have been An early form of coronavirus That we did not know about As Voice of America reported only recently Scientists chasing the origins of COVID-19 Are now adding Southeast Asia to the search A spate of recent studies Has found more viruses Nearly as similar As the one in Yunnan, China Further afield in Thailand and Cambodia A lead scientist in the WHO team noted We haven't done enough work in Myanmar, Laos and Vietnam To really say there aren't even more in those countries Setting aside informed speculation, disinformation campaigns and conspiracy theorists Broader international missions are warranted to examine the origin of COVID-19 in every relevant country. A global pandemic warrants a global investigation. It would not be the first time that early attributions are later proven mistaken. When the swine flu outbreak was first identified in Mexico City in March of 2009, the Obama administration's agricultural officials blamed it on Asia without evidence. In new theory, swine flu started in Asia, not Mexico, said the New York Times. It led to an avalanche of media hype on the alleged Asian swine flu. Then, seven years later, mid-2016, a scientific report by the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City attributed the 2009 H1N1 virus to pigs in central Mexico, not Asia. By then, few any longer cared. All potential COVID-19 pathways should be debated on the basis of scientific facts by the observers and the media, but media coverage should be based on the priority assessments of qualified scientists. Dr. Dan Steinbach wrote this article. He has served at the India, China, and American Institute, Shanghai Institutes for International Studies, and the EU Center. Um, and he's part of the differencegroup.net. 
this article picked from the street But it does spark a lot of thought We do need to research this And you can't just base everything on something you saw Once again, back to social media And it's interesting the people that believe that Trump actually won the election Those conspiracy theorists Then often go lockstep with the anti-vaxxing ideas In fact, one conservative talk show host that goes along that thought process Got called on it by a couple Christian conservatives That said, no, look, you base all your beliefs on the Bible And what it says in the Bible But there, are, here are other verses that say that, you know what? What you're thinking is not exactly smart When you're saying stuff Just you, you, Where's your humility Right who knows Who knows for sure You have to have humility uh, That's what God says It says in the Bible I am not a pastor I cannot quote to you uh, Verse Where the verse comes from Chapter and verse But I do know this And that is That there are so many people That say these weird anti-vaxxing things That then go and Oh I feel sick I'm going down to CVS And buy myself some medicine for that I get some aspirin What? what, what? Wait a minute So you believe that science But you don't believe this other science That same science is working in both of those areas And then they pick up their smartphone Because they're bored And they start looking up more conspiracy theories articles That reaffirm what they believe um, That technology That you're using there Was based on a science The science of magnets And electricity And uh, I've never built a smartphone But I know that there was a lot of Very smart people In the past that created The technology that would then Create that Amazing invention In your hand And all I can think of is the late, great Douglas Adams Who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy And how what we walk around with in our pockets What we hold in our hands Is basically a version of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy I mean, everything we want is there at our fingertips It's amazing And it's ridiculous to be so narrow-minded And folk and, and, and just All it's based on is the fear Of getting a shot Now I would love to get the shot I haven't gotten it yet I'm over 50 I can now I can't find a dang place to do it Every place I look up It's booked Booked solid And then I Well because I'm in the Bay Area Of course it's booked But the first opportunity I can I will get it Here are some Recent interesting facts That were in the USA Today The USA Today Yes I put a the in front of it Because it is I just throw in the's for no apparent reason Because I grew up in Southern California And we call our freeways the The 405 The 5 So here's the USA Today Getting a vaccine Here are some facts that they're printing here Seven truths that you should know About COVID-19 vaccines Getting a vaccine will not give you COVID-19 None of the vaccines contain the live virus You cannot get sick with COVID-19 You should be vaccinated with By getting the virus That's what this means You And you should get vaccinated Even if you've had COVID-19 Research shows that The consequences of COVID-19 Can be severe Even if you've recovered From having COVID-19 There is not enough information To know if you are protected From getting it again Someone told me Who had the coronavirus That if you do get the Moderna shot You will get sick from the first shot And not the second shot But if you haven't had the coronavirus You get sick from the second shot Not the first shot The COVID-19 vaccines Do not have severe side effects In most people It's common to experience Mild to moderate signs That your body is building protection After getting a vaccine These can include Muscle aches, tiredness, headaches Fever, chills Or soreness where you had the injection It's very common To have the Arm The vaccine arm 
However, any new medications can cause an allergic reaction in a small number of people. For this reason, you'll be asked to stay for observation for a short period after you've received the shot. The COVID-19 vaccine will not change your DNA or make you infertile. Oh my gosh. I just want it. When I hear someone say that, I, I want to say to them, oh, okay. And hey, let's go out tonight and look for UFOs. Let's take a drive to Area 51, shall we? And we'll go and, and do that. And you can be Mulder and I can be Scully. Because I've always I wanted to be Scully. She had such beautiful eyes. I wish I had beautiful eyes like her. Wasn't she Margaret Thatcher in the... Oh, Matt Smith recently said he was in The Crown. Is it called The Crown? That miniseries in Netflix that talked about Prince Philip who recently passed. And Matt Smith said that that guy... He was very, very uh, honored to play him in that miniseries on Netflix. But... The vaccines are designed to give your body instructions And I say that only because I'm wearing a Doctor Who shirt today From the Matt Smith era when he played the doctor The vaccines are designed to give your body instructions to fight the coronavirus There is no way the vaccine can change the DNA of your cells No evidence getting the vaccine can cause women to miscarry If you are pregnant, talk to your doctor about the risks and benefits of getting the COVID-19 vaccine And... When you get the vaccine, you will not be asked for information about your immigration status. The vaccine is available to the public regardless of immigration status. And there are a couple other things too, but that's in the USA Today. All right, on from the vaccine and conspiracy theories and politics and all of that. Although this is related somewhat to the coronavirus and that would be working from home. And self-isolating, we're still gonna do that. Especially if you're me and you have not had the shot yet But just because you're practicing self-isolation doesn't mean you need to be alone In fact, technology like video calls allows you to stay connected during the COVID-19 pandemic Many free video chatting services are available on your favorite device Most support group chats too So it's possible to virtually socialize With many people at once Possibly you've done it by now Since this has been over a year With this whole thing As you might expect The video calls are also being used For business meetings Online education Fitness classes Even doctor visits Yes And therapy And people More and more people Need therapy Because we are working from home And we're anxious And we got anxiety And all the stuff That we would leave behind at work Because it was a commute to get to work Maybe a half hour drive We could just leave it at work Nope Since we're working from home It's at home So we are going to more and more be using Therapists It's becoming more And psychologists And more and more We can Well They're doing it I don't know if you know this or not But that's what All that they're doing Is online therapy Online sessions The first step is to choose what video calling service to go with As everyone on the video call must use the same platform, obviously There's Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Google Duo Google's getting rid of Hangouts Although they've been threatening that for a while But and trying to move everyone to Duo and Google Chat FaceTime has its limitations It only works with Apple products Zoom can be used on all phones, tablets, and computers But the free version has a time limit of up to 40 minutes The next step is to sign up for your account If you don't have one already You shouldn't have to pay for a video call service As there are many free options You can often send an invite to friends within the app To arrange for a time to video call Or send an email, text, or make a call To coordinate the chat And a lot of you are already used to that Getting that email that has the link Of course, just be careful that you're not Clicking on a link That's actually some kind of spam That's some kind of virus Some kind of phishing That's going to cause you all Even more headaches At my company That I work for Had a whole crazy August and September last year Because of that very fact For non-techie people You might need to explain how to join Believe me that is not easy I'm still trying to get my mom to join And it is not I've been trying to get her The other day we were talking about How she has She's using a a Microsoft 
type of email. And I go, Mom, you know, Microsoft owns Skype, so you get your own free Skype account with that. Oh, really? How do I do that? Well, you just open up your email there, and there'll be a Skype connection. You can, you can uh, include me, and we can Skype. Huh? How does that work? Huh? She's over in Florida. This is impossible to explain to her over the phone. Since video calling can be somewhat bandwidth intensive, ensure you've got a strong Wi-Fi connection. Oh, cost, uh, uh, Comra- Comcast, rather. Comcast and, and AT&T have been cashing in on all of this, haven't they? Yep. Because I've had to increase my bandwidth. Ensure you've got strong Wi-Fi connection. If you need to, choose a spot somewhere close to the router for optimum performance. Be sure you have good lighting in the room so others can see you clearly. That is true, but be careful. Don't use too much lighting. We talked a lot about lighting in the last podcast. I have to tell you, when I do my Zoom calls, I keep the light very atmospheric. I do not want full-blown... Uh, 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 fluorescence Full bone f- blown fluorescence Not good With with my look According to myself When I look at it I go Ew. I need the mood lighting to help me But don't do darkness either Don't be in shadows Get some kind of light on your face Don't have to be the full blown Intensive fluorescent lights But And that's the other people Who've been cashing in Is Amazon They've got They've been selling All those uh, Those ring lights People have been using Those like crazy lately To try and make it Look better I say natural light's The best If you can get light Coming in through A close by window That just looks Fantastic It's not abrasive On the eyes Can you be abrasive On the eyes Hard on the eyes Pleasant on that Pleasant to the eyes If you're using a phone or a tablet Instead of a laptop Prop up the device on a counter, desk, or table So you don't have to hold it the entire time That's true And your shakiness while you're holding it Makes it Ugh I hate that jarring, shaky Look Makes me seasick Do you know That Marty Feldman died Marty Feldman, the guy who played Igor in Young Frankenstein, he died of a heart attack while filming the movie Yellowbeard with Graham Chapman. Graham Chapman from Monty Python. So, so they were filming in Mexico, that movie. He died in Mexico City. He drank something like 40 cups of coffee a day. Marty Feldman All these fascinating Marty Feldman facts His eyes did not originally look like that It was caused by a thyroid operation that he had He had a thyroid issue Caused his eyes to do that But it wasn't until those eyes did that That his career really launched And he had a show in America I think it was called the Marty Feldman Comedy Factory or something to that effect. And when Gene Wilder said saw that, that's when he said, I gotta have Marty Feldman in Young Frankenstein. And what's fascinating why Graham Chapman would want Marty Feldman in his movie is he was very close, Marty with Monty Python. He gave them all jobs in the early days. They were writers for his show in England. Marty Feldman had a show in England. He was quite popular there first. And then he got popular in America That fascinates me But he would drink a bunch of coffee This according to the late great Dom DeLuise He would drink a bunch of coffee Before Well Dom asked him Why are you drinking so much coffee today And and Marty says Oh I'm going to be on camera He would drink a bunch of coffee Before he got on camera Which is so funny Because back then We're talking the 70s early 80s it was difficult I mean you had to pay him A lot of money And and deal with these Awkward Crazy Video Recorders Or maybe you even Used film If you wanted to do Any kind of video Of personal use I mean nowadays You just grab your phone Bam You're recording yourself Uploading it to YouTube Like I do For every podcast Which you can see The little videos I do at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com But do I drink 40 cups of coffee beforehand? No, maybe five Should cut down on that But then I get the headaches Ugh, I hate that 
But Marty Feldman, very fascinating guy. I tried watching the on YouTube. There is the trailer for Yellowbeard. I have not actually seen Yellowbeard. It doesn't look that good. But if you're a huge Monty Python fan, you would want to see it. If you're a huge Marty Feldman fan, you'd want to see it. And if you just want to see how how much. <laughs> Uh, the crazy comedy of England mixed with Mexico, mixed with drugs and alcohol, mixed with I don't know what was going on in those days. Graham Chapman, um, he died of complications from AIDS, but yes, just a whole fa- just to see that was like Graham Chapman's big project that he did. I had no idea about it. So I'm interested in maybe seeing a little There are the highlights, let's just say, on YouTube That's probably all I need to see It looked a little bit out there, a little bit crazy Alright, we're going to end the show today With a click Oh, one other clue Before we talk We move away from putting yourself on the camera Which you're probably doing more and more uh, within the past year and two Technology can help you socialize in entertaining ways There is the House Party app Which combines video calling and fun multiplayer games You can play together while chatting at the same time There's no cost to play Netflix Party With Netflix, Netflix Party You and someone who lives elsewhere Can watch the same Netflix content And chat simultaneously too You'll need the Google Chrome browser and free Netflix party extension for Chrome With the Libby app The Libby app You can, that's L-I-B-B-Y You can borrow books from your local Library, then join a book club On Facebook Or other platform to discuss your weekly Read, that appeals to me That sounds fascinating To me Oh, Cause I gotta read more books y'all As I've mentioned in the past Speaking of books E. Arthur Self, Ph.D., wrote this book called Good Success, Learning Good Lessons from Bad Leaders. And he wrote the following. Judgment. Judgments have both objective and subjective elements. Even some yes or no true-false questions have shades of rightness or wrongness inherent within them. Take, for example, the work of a meat inspector. If an inspector judges a side of beef To be unfit for human consumption Would that same side of beef Be unfit for consumptions by dogs and cats? Would it be okay to give it to someone who was starving? These questions don't prevent inspectors From making a judgment about human consumption Rather, they are required to judge Based on their responsibility And that responsibility gives them the right To say good or bad Fit or unfit Judging work performance doesn't always mean that something negative will occur. Not all judgments made in courts of law convict. Some exonerate. However, within the threat of judgment, all behaviors and achievements become acceptable and cannot be accessed or assessed to be superior or inferior to any other. This argument primarily belongs to the ineffective leader, unemployed philosopher, Or disingenuous social worker In the real world Consumers, markets And good leaders make Definitive distinctions Occasionally You must exercise your Responsibility to judge But unlike in a court of law You do not have the right to condemn You achieve no benefit Whatsoever of harboring Ill will Resentment against Or loss of emotional energy To bad leaders So go ahead You are free to evaluate You may not have the positional Or formal authority to judge But you have the moral obligation To evaluate a leader's performance And character Particular in matters relating to theft Or misuse of personnel And other resources If bad leaders have proven themselves To be bad through their attitudes Actions or Inactions, then you have the right to, du- to judge them accordingly. Mm-hmm. That's right. Judge, let's see, be judged. I guess there is some judgment that is allowed. <sighs> and there are more about that, and it gets really philosophical in that book, Good Success, Learning Good le- Lessons from Bad Leaders. 
Yes, a big topic there. Oh, look who's outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Ten. Hello, Michael Marshall's Madame Ruta Big Owns. That was a very long podcast today. Oh! Yes, I hope you enjoyed it. Did you like it? Yes. Do you want to listen to it again? Yes. Tomorrow, are you going surfing? No. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we look really good on camera, dear. Yeah, Timmy. Do you know that? Excellent. Well, everyone can chime in. 336-MM Daily. Tell me what you think about anything we covered today. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is a Mike Matthews Daily, as in what this podcast has been. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. I will be on a radio station doing my radio show on the internet. And you can hear it at my website, mikesdailypodcast.com. There is a link, but you got to go to it between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Sundays. Sundays, and that's Pacific time, California time, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. That might actually be noon to 7 or something where you are, but just look at your watch and make the appropriate changes to figure out what time. California time is Pacific time And I will talk to you Then and play some music And have some interesting news And stuff On Sundays And Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Is where to find that Next show Shelly Shuhart Floyd the floor man John Deere the engineer Thank you for listening And you can tell me What you think about Anything we covered today 336 MM daily That's 3 plus 3 equals 6 MM is a Mike Matthews Daily as in what this podcast has kind of been the past couple of days. I've been busy. Gosh, get off my back. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.